and Can cake. Can we have a piece? Let's focus on the cake, right? I want water. Welcome back to My Cupcake Addiction. I'm Elise Strawn and today we're going to be making this amazing Moana inspired tropical luau cake. If you're not already subscribed to the My Cupcake Addiction channel, make sure you do for new videos every week. And if you want to see my videos by email notification, you can hover over the little alarm button next to the subscribe button and opt to receive a notification every time I upload so you never miss one. This Moana cake is over the top, it's lots of fun, and above all, it's versatile, guys. Make this a Moana cake, make it a tropical cake, make it a tiki cake, make it your own. The things you're going to need to make your Moana cake I've gone with one of my own recipes, the mud cake from the Sweet Celebrations cookbook, but you can use your favorite. All up, you're gonna need four eight inch by one inch high layers of cake, and then another four six inch by one inch high layers of cake. That's about four batches of the mud cake recipe. I've got a couple of cake boards. You'll need a 10 inch and a five inch, and I've got an optional super large board I'll be using at the end. Some crushed white cookies, straws, make sure they're plastic, buttercream, and I've colored mine a sandy color and then a light blue and a dark blue. You'll need toothpicks, a little brown powder food color or a little brown dusting powder. Flowers, decide if you want to use edible flowers here, fresh or sugar. I've gone with gum paste flowers. Some ganache and green fondant. I've also made you guys two templates. You've got your Moana and Maui template and also your kind of tattoo looking template that's gonna go around the top layer of cake. I'll link to those down below and I'll leave everything you need on the mycupcakeaddiction.com website as well as in the description box below. Let's get into it. I'm feeling tropical. La 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 la. La 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 la. la, la. Oh, sorry, we were doing ingredients. First up, you want to take your six inch cakes and just trim the very base of them off. And then I'm going to use a cake leveler to give myself four nice one inch even layers of cake. You want to do the same with your eight inch cakes, although I'm going to make mine slightly bigger than an inch, about an inch and a quarter. Again, trimming off the bottoms and leveling out the tops. Starting with my eight inch cake, I'm gonna stack that on my base board with a little ganache to secure it to the board. And then I'm gonna lay a cake and then a nice thin layer of ganache, cake, ganache, cake, and ganache. Give that one a nice coating, don't worry if it's not too neat here, of ganache and pop it off into the fridge. Repeat that process with your six inch cake. There's really no need to stick this one to the base board, just cake, ganache, cake, ganache, cake, and then cover the whole thing in ganache, off into the fridge to set. Your base layer should be pretty well set now, so I'm gonna give it another nice coating of that chocolate ganache, and then I'm gonna roll out my green fondant. Sprinkle down a little bit of powdered sugar or cornstarch or corn flour, just to keep your fondant from sticking to the bench. Don't go too crazy thin here. I'm gonna do this in about three sections, and I'm gonna measure my cake, and I want my fondant to be just a little bit longer than the side of my bottom eight inch cake. So it's about eight inches long in total. I'm gonna slide that onto a piece of parchment paper, which is just gonna help me to move it and use a pizza cutter to kind of cut strips, like the tassels in a hula skirt. And then I'm gonna use the parchment to pick it up and adhere first the very top section of the fondant to around the top inch of the top of my eight inch cake. Once your green is all in place, just pat it down gently across the sides, but to cover up any gaps and to kind of give it more of a three dimensional and flowy type look, you want to use your offcuts of green fondant to just cut some additional strips and you can either use a little bit of water or just the stick from the fondant itself to attach them to cover up any gaps where you can see that brown ganache underneath but also to give a little bit more movement, a little bit more flow and a little bit more texture to the skirt. Repeat that until your cake's completely covered. You can see from my finished cake, you've got really nice, neat green edges, but it's kind of got a little movement to it because we've added all of those little extra pieces along the way. Don't worry if the top's not completely neat, we're gonna fix that up. Take your six inch cake out of the fridge and you're gonna apply a little bit of that sand colored buttercream. Don't go too thick here, but this is really just so that you don't have any of the dark ganache poking through. Once you've got a nice coating of buttercream, just use an offset spatula to remove it from the baseboard and pop it onto a tray 
covered with crushed graham cracker. I'm gonna scoop up those crushed white cookies just with the palms of my hand and just compress them all over that top six inch layer of cake. To make this really nice and smooth and to compact my white cookies, I'm gonna take a little bit of parchment, press it up against the sides and on the tops of the cake and just really smooth it out. That's gonna give me a really nice compressed sand finish, which is gonna make things easier when we move the cake and also when we add our little details. It's looking very, very beach-like. Pop that one off into the fridge so that that buttercream layer can set because then it's gonna make it really easy for us to move this top layer and stick it onto our bottom layer. Before we go attaching our two layers together, we also need to support the underside so our top six inch doesn't crush the bottom layers of our eight inch. I'm gonna do that using a board, but first of all, I'm gonna neaten up the top of that cake with a little bit more of my green fondant. So I'm gonna roll out quite a thin disc of green fondant and I want it to be a little bit smaller than the eight inch cake and a little bit bigger than the six inch board, but nice and round. So I'm gonna use my board as a bit of a template and cut around with a pizza cutter. I'm not gonna stick this down with anything because it really doesn't need it. It's on top, gravity will do its job. And then I'm gonna lay it down so it just slightly overlaps that outside layer of my grass skirt looking finish. Before I put my disc on, I need something to hold the disc in place. So I like to use milkshake straws or Ikea straws, depending on where you live. And I'm gonna place those straight down, four of them inside my cake. I like the straws because they're really easy to remove, but more importantly, because they're really easy to cut with a pair of scissors. Sometimes if you're using wooden cake dowels or bamboo skewers, they're actually really, really tough to cut. And actually I like to pull them out just a fraction. So they're actually down inside the line of my little fondant disc. Looking good. Just to stick everything together, I'm just gonna put a little bit of ganache on top. The great thing about stacking a cake like this is you actually serve the top cake as a single cake, then remove it, remove the straws, and serve the bottom cake as another separate cake. So if you're not having a huge party, you can kind of keep one layer and serve one layer. Pre-refrigeration, this layer would have been impossible for us to move around. But post-refrigeration, it's actually quite firm, so it's not gonna press out of shape. A little bit more ganache down onto my baseboard, again, just to hold everything in place. And then I'm gonna lift my entire six inch cake layer off that tray and place it on top. Ha ha, this looks adorable. Now, because I don't wanna see any of the joining here where you can kind of see the board in between, I'm gonna roll a thin sausage or a long tube of my green fondant and just wrap that around in between the two layers to disguise any joints. For this bit, you wanna take the template, I'll leave a link to it down below, and I've just cut out the center of it so it makes almost like a stencil. Just use an X-Acto or a Stanley knife to do that. I'm using a little bit of brown powdered food coloring, which you can get from specialty cake stores. I also thought you could probably use one of those food coloring sprays in like a gold or a brown maybe, but I'm just gonna dab it onto my little stencil. And because my buttercream's nice and firm and those graham crackers have been pushed on nice and firmly, they're not being removed. We're just getting like kind of the faint outline, almost like a tattoo pattern. Something like this. Very cool. And just like that, we've created our very own stencil. I love this effect, and I think it looks just like Dwayne The Rock Johnson's tattoos, kind of like his tattoos in the movie. Now this next part's up to you, but I always feel like when you can extend the size of your cake by utilizing the cake boards or the cake serving trays, it just makes it look bigger and all that much more impressive. So I'm gonna use a secondary cake board to create some ocean because most of Moana takes place on or around the ocean. I've got two different shades of blue buttercream and I'm kind of gonna swirl the two of them together. But first I'll put down a smear, that's the technical term, and we'll put our cake on. That's gonna hold everything together. And a lot of the time I'll actually reuse these cake boards. So once I'm done with it, I'll wash it off and then I'll use it for another cake. Nothing is wasted. You can hand spread this if you want, but I'm gonna place two different colors into a single piping bag with no piping tip. So my dark blue, just roughly in one side, make a little opening and then my light blue goes in on the other. That's gonna give us a two-tone effect without any fancy two-tone piping tips. Snip off a generous tip and we've made our own piping tip. I'm gonna pipe that on in nice big round swirls and I kind of want it to look like the water's lapping at our base cake, but having those two cake boards also makes it look a little bit like it's kind of raised up a little bit. The tide is coming in. 
And I'm literally just swirling this because I want it to look a bit like waves. I sometimes like to add either ribbon or this is just like a stick on washi tape just to kind of finish off the edges of my board. And now it's time to top. So I've given you guys a template where you can mirror image both Maui and Moana. All you need to do is cut around them and stick them onto toothpicks. It's up to you if you want this to be a double sided cake, but if you do, then you can use the mirror image to make Maui the same on the back as he is on the front and same with Moana. So no matter which way you turn the cake, you're still gonna get to see both of them. All right, on goes Maui and Moana. Straight in. And try to stop their feet just at the sand. If they go into the buttercream, you'll notice the paper or whatever you've printed them on will absorb some of the butter from the buttercream. So try to keep them just feet in the sand, like so. Finally, flowers. These ones are sugar flowers. It's up to you if you wanna to go to the trouble of making them. You can also buy pre-made sugar flowers or you could use a little sprig of real flowers. If you're gonna use the real flowers, I'm gonna show you a really fun technique for adding them to the cake so they never actually touch the cake by using a paper straw. So I'm gonna push the straw down below my center board and then snip it off. And it's essentially gonna create like a little funnel or a little tunnel where my flower stems can go. Use a fatter straw if you're using more flowers so you've got a bit more space. And in go my flowers straight into that little straw where they can be safe. Perfect, our Moana cake is done. I love how this cake turned out. Whether you look at it from the back, the front, or the sides, this has got all of the elements to be an amazing Moana cake. But if you're not a Moana fan, you could switch out these little characters on top for something like a little printable tiki to make this the ultimate Hawaiian birthday party cake. So if you guys are ever wondering how to cut a tiered cake, because we've made two individual cakes, we can cut straight down our first one just wait till you guys see inside this. Whoa! It's a side in a dark side. I can't see it, but side. No fair. This is gonna be my piece. Jacob thinks there's a dinosaur inside. Hey, off that water. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Can I Whoa! I just gave you a whole piece of cake and you want to lick the water? Yeah. Oh. We hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do for new videos every week. Let us know what you loved about this cake. And I think you two have both got blue lips. Can we eat some um, number piece?